we are saved through obedience to the truth. First Peter 1 and verse 22, seeing ye have purified your souls through obedience to the truth. We could go on and on and notice example after example. But needless to say, as we study the scriptures, as we look carefully at every example of conversion in the New Testament, we find the truth always had to be taught, the gospel. It had to be preached. And our meeting affords us an excellent opportunity to invite friends to come to hear the gospel preached in its simplicity. Why do we need to work for the meeting? We need to work for our meeting because of the many blessings associated with being a child of God, a Christian. As a child of God, we should share and we should tell others of the good things of Christianity. They ought to see what is involved in being a child of God. They ought to understand the peace that comes from forgiveness of sins. You see, as a Christian, I've been saved from my sins and I can enjoy the spiritual blessings that are in Christ Jesus. And the New Testament even says that the hope that we have as children of God is an anchor of the soul. What is it that helps us as we journey through the storms of life? It is our Lord God. We should want those who are our friends and our family and our co-workers to have these blessings. But it's not going to happen accidentally. It's unlikely that they are going to stumble over the gospel or over obedience to it without being taught, without having the opportunity to hear. Not to say there is untold joy in helping to bring someone to Christ. To experience that great feeling that you have helped someone have their sins taken away through obedience to the gospel. Why should we work for our meeting? We need to work for our meeting realizing the shortness of life. Rusty said, look, here it is already April. Well, not only is it April, it's April of 2009. Where does time go? Every day passes another 24 hours. Every week passes another seven days, another month, another year, another decade. And you know, when you're young as a, as a child, even as a teenager, it seems like all oh, life is forever and, you know, 30 is old. But how quickly that changes. 30 seems awful young, doesn't it? Life is short. And we have no guarantee of tomorrow or, or next week or next year. As a matter of fact, James chapter 4 puts it like this, beginning with verse 13 and reading through verse 15. Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if it's the Lord will, we shall do this or do that. Look around. We see death and decay on everything. We see trees that were so beautiful. And over time... They, like everything in life, go the way of the world. We see flowers spring up, beautiful flowers. This time of year, even wild flowers, we call them weeds and cut them down. But aren't they beautiful? Coming out of a long winter to see life, but look how short a time they exist. And even those who enjoy growing roses or, or tulips or various kinds of flowers, we enjoy them, but we realize they're just going to last a little while and then they're going to die. And so it is with life. Every day there are those around us who are meeting death. You see, unless Jesus comes, all of us are going to die. And that's not what's important. What is important is whether or not we are prepared to die when it comes. Whether or not we have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and many of our neighbors, many of our friends, many of our family members are not prepared. They've never obeyed the gospel. 
They've never enjoyed the forgiveness of sins that Jesus made possible through his death upon the cross. They've never served the Lord. They've never learned perhaps the joy that comes not only from living as a child of God, but putting others ahead of themselves. And what this means is that when they stand before God on the day of judgment, they will have no excuse. But they'll be denied that entrance into heaven and instead be ushered into an eternity of a devil's hell. Life is so brief, so short. And then when we add to the fact that not only is life short, but it's uncertain, it becomes even more urgent. We mentioned this morning in class, 14 people shot and killed in an immigration place where people were learning English. Fortunately, there was no more than that. There were 30 or 40 people there in the building. Look around the automobile accidents. Look at those in the hospital dying of disease and illness. We realize that not only is life short, but we have no guarantee of how many days or how many years we'll live here. But instead, we are encouraged in the pages of Scripture to be prepared. As a matter of fact, we don't read about tomorrow. Instead, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. And one of the beautiful songs that we sometimes sing says that today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. That's why we need to make sure that we work for this meeting. That we make sure that our friends and neighbors are not only invited, but they are encouraged. We need to encourage with all of our might, with all of our being. Because they may not have another opportunity. Why do we need to work for our meeting in light of what's just been said because of the fact that there will be a judgment. There will be a day of sentencing, if you will. In one sense, we are living our trial here on this earth. And when we stand before God and we stand before Christ in judgment, we will receive a sentence of life or of death, eternal life or eternal punishment. In John chapter 5, Jesus made this statement in verses 28 and 29. He said, marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear His voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Hebrews 9 and verse 27, the Bible says, It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this cometh the judgment. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. That every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done. Whether it be good or bad. You see there will be a day of judgment. It will happen. It is assured. It is a guaranteed thing. You will be there and I will be there. Every person who has lived upon the face of the earth will stand before God in judgment. Beginning with Adam and Eve, coming forward into the last person who lives upon the earth. And how tragic it's going to be for those who are unprepared. You see, our attitude toward this meeting may determine where some people go following judgment. Our excitement, our enthusiasm may determine whether they come and have the opportunity to hear and possibly obey the gospel. 